Howdy, little lady. How you doing? Literally had to move because MJ was being so rude to me. So hi, welcome. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a cowgirl. I There's a reason why I'm wearing this hat, so just stick around to find out. That's what, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick around and we're gonna find out. I'm very excited to talk to you about what I read in July because it was a really great reading month and I'm really excited to kind of review that myself. I do have a little haul before that I'm very excited for. So let's get into it, especially because some of the books that I read in July are part of this haul, and I'll explain. Let's go. First, I want to show you this shirt that my sister got me for my birthday. It's just It says, reading is sexy. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, and that's not my dog, actually. That is my dog, but that's not her in the flesh. She's underneath my chair. If this is your first time watching, I do have a puppy. My sister also got me these, these bookmarks. Hot Girls Read because that's the truest statement that I've seen yet. It's really fun that she got me these bookmarks um, last week on my birthday because last week I just read on my Kindle straight for a whole week and I've, I just got my Kindle so I've never done that before. So I had not been using bookmarks, which is a weird feeling. It's like weird to be like, oh, now I have some choices. Baby's got some choices. I'm gonna get into opening packages. I know that that's the moment that we've all been waiting for. We're all just like, Argh. you know, like veins what popping out of your forehead. Saying? I didn't want to introduce three books that I had just picked up last week because it's a book haul. Why wouldn't I show you my new books? So we got Belladonna, paperback version of fucking obsessed with this version. I'm so excited. It's purple. They call them painted edges, I think. It's called painted edges, right? Yeah, I don't know. This is my first book with different color edges. I was just so excited to see a paperback version of Belladonna. It's always been hardcover at Target, on Amazon, at Barnes, everywhere that I've seen it. And so seeing it, I was like, yeah, immediately. Let's go! And purple edges just were a nice touch and that's the most perfect type of just instance that you can buy when you like something because it it is one thing and then it has something that's even more elevated and then you love it even more because of that. Like, I finally picked up The Nature of Witches, you know me, and if you don't then I'll tell you I love witch fiction. I read a fuck ton of witch fiction so I... Anytime I'm at a bookstore at all, or even on Amazon, or my Kindle now, I will just like type in witches, or I will go look for any witch book that maybe I had missed before or I had not seen before. And there's there's quite a few, but I've also read quite a few. So um, The Nature of Witches is one that I've seen, and the, the cover just looks so empowering. I just feel like there's going to be so much energy in this book, and so I'm really excited. But also, it it's like giving fall to me, so... I don't know how much longer I'm gonna wait. I ha I'm not waiting. Okay, yeah, we'll back into that. Go hex yourself. This is a book that I've seen around actually for a couple years, or maybe just one year. I'm not sure when this one came out. I think there's three in the series already. So 2022. It's 2023, and she's already came up with three books. I think that's really impressive. And the cover to me, for some reason, had always kind of looked um, like little kiddish. I don't know. I, I love little kid stuff. Like I love. Uh, YA, I don't know, maybe cheap, maybe bad, I don't know. There's probably something internal there that I need to work through that set me off with this cover. But as of now, I'm excited to read it and I love the cartoon covers. So those are what I got at Barnes last week. Now let's finally get into the packages. I love when people tear the tabs like that and then put it in a compilation video, so I want to do that for you. You're welcome! Okay, let's start with this one. The Best Kind of Magic! The Best Kind of Magic by Crystal Sestari. This book is so floppy. I like it. Oh my gosh, it feels like... It's so... I've actually already read this one, so we will get into that later on in the video. What's next? What's next? Oh my gosh, flawless. This is a lot bulkier than I thought it was. I ordered this quite a while ago and for some reason I just like haven't opened it yet. Cool chapter. I wanted to get all the mirror covers so I need to order the other books. I don't know why hadn't I ordered the other books. I think this was the last day to order this one with the mirror cover. So... That's cool. Is this the Chestnut Springs series? Is this Chestnut Springs? Is this the Chestnut Springs series? How would I know? Oh, because it says Chestnut Springs. Okay, yeah. 
This is the Chestnut Spring series, also on Kindle Unlimited. That's really awesome that they have this series on Kindle Unlimited. I've heard just amazing things. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Okay, check this one out. The only purple house in town. Story about this one. I'm really excited about this one. I bought this one before it came out for it to be delivered on the day that it came out. And I guess I just didn't realize that this one, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I fucking love Anna Guire so much. Like my all time favorite fiction series, Anna Guire writes. I'm pretty sure that this is in the same universe as the series that I love. And if that's true, you're never going to hear the end of it. Uh, let me read the back really quick. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't reread a lot of books. The Fix It Witches series, by Anna Guire is one series that I really am serious when I say I want to reread that in the fall and mainly October. That's why I start reading witch books in July. When it comes to the climax of the season, which is October, I am wanting to read what I want to read. I'm wanting to read books I know aren't going to let me write down. I'm wanting to read books that I know are worth my time. And I know that that is within this series. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with this book yet. If I'm going to read it in like a witch, a generalized witch video, reading other witch books, or if I'm going to reread that, that series. I'm trying to get ahead of my reading goal like enough that it's okay to read three books that I've already read. Something about my OCDs there. I, blah, blah, blah. We're not talking about that right now. But the only purple house in town I am so excited for. I, uh, that's how excited I am. Yes. More to come from this little purple book. Now that I think about it, I should really find a witch hat that kind of makes me feel as cool as this cowgirl hat does. <laughs> I need a witch hat that's not cheap, you know? I want to witch hat that's like so quality and just so magical and just like it probably if it's a good witch hat it has crystals on it and it sparkles and it's like it's just it makes me feel so in a different world so i'm look i'm on the lookout for that here we have a box here so i'm gonna open that if you sew or you have anyone close to you that sews you know that you have special scissors for sewing now i have some different shears, but these are also a pair of sewing shears. So what I'm about to do, you might want to close your eyes or look away. The housemaid and the housemaid secret. Why are they different textures? This one's like matte and this one's like shiny. If you have a Kindle, I really enjoyed reading these on the Kindle. I felt like I went so fast with these. I highly recommend, like I said, if they're part of my July red, we'll get to it in a second. So <laughs> we'll get to, to these in a second. Now for this big boy, I'm so excited. This is my birthday present from some of my best friends in the whole world. The love that I feel just from the outside of this box makes me nervous to open it. I'm just gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss them a lot, okay? I see this and I'm like, oh my God, that is the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. And it's just, it's just bubble wrap. But guess what? They're that great. Gosh, I feel like I'm gonna cry. Oh my gosh. What is this? Oh my gosh. They're some of the most beautiful earrings and they match my fingernails so perfectly. Like I said, the sweetest people ever. More jewelry? I know Ayana made this. It's a citrine ring. She is so talented. That's, that fits literally perfectly. Lit. Ah, this is so gorgeous and so beautiful and so stunning. I think that I know what this is and I'm so excited for it. Oh, oh my gosh, I got it. Oh. And it's a magnetic bookmark. I've never seen a magnetic bookmark before. That is so amazing. I'm... Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I'm so excited and so happy for this book. Ah. I'm so excited. 
It looks like there's another one in here. The Midnight Library. A dazzling novel about all the choices that go into a life well lived. I know that Ayana loves, loves The Midnight Library. I have read How to Stop Time, Matt's um, book, but I that's the only one that I've read of his. I'm The Midnight Library. Very excited to connect with Ayana through this book. This is, this is good. This is great. I'm so excited. A magic mushroom bath bomb. So them, they are the best. Ah! It's a great feeling to have great friends. As soon as I was ready to transition into what I've read for the month, knock on the door and there's another Amazon package. I don't think that it's books or book related, but who knows? Let's open it and let's find out. Oh my gosh, this is giant. Sunglasses and my new planner. So it's wild to me to actually fill out a planner completely. And as of next month, I will have filled out three complete planners in my lifetime. And that is just mind blowing to me. Like back to back to back. I have to do by appointment for my job. So like I have to know what's happening hour by hour every single day. Let me show you. So this is what it looks like. And then so cute. And then this is what the days look like. So it's by increment. And then, oh, cool. I get to do weekly review notes. Nice. See, a lot of times in my other planners, it doesn't give the option for 50 minute increments for the weekends, but I work every single day. Okay, this is so nice too. To be able to look at a glance. This is gonna be a really awesome planner. Over here, we also have what I'm grateful for, follow up, top priority, and weekly focus. This one goes to June 2024, but it does have yearly goals. So I can start the goals now, August. It doesn't have to be at the beginning of the year. Next, let's open these glasses up really quick and then I know that you're dying to hear what I read for July. Do I like it? I can't, I can't tell cause like I don't re-wear my hat like this. I don't wear a hat all the time. They're cute. Are they $11 cute? Yeah. So that's all I care about. Cute. It's the confidence. Wear, wear anything with confidence and you'll be fine. Okay, let's get to what I read for July. Do you guys like the hat? Should I take it off? Is it distracting? Who the fuck cares? It's literally YouTube. It's so much fun. I should wear the hat, shouldn't I? Yeah, but don't tuck your hair. Don't tuck your hair behind your ears like that. Like how I, how you had it originally was fine. This is cute. Wear the hat. I'm gonna wear the hat. Let's wear the hat. She being nice now. Okay, bitch, you ready? Was I focused for that one? Okay, bitch, you ready? This was a very good ring mine. I'm more chill about it than I really initially thought I would be. Because here's why. I'm chill about it because it is what it is. You know, next month, say I do more. It is what it is. Say I do more, but they were all two star reads. It is what it is. Say I do less, but they're all five star reads. It is what it is. Is anything inherently good or bad? It is what it is. So that's what this is. But I'm, I'm excited about it. Let's not get it twisted. Okay, let's start. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Gather around, sit down, everyone. Sit down. Chandler's about to talk. It is Chandler's turn to talk. <laughs> Trying to lift them all without showing you. <laughs> Even though I hope you know, I hope you watch my videos because then you would know what I read. Yeah, I hope you watch my videos because then you don't know what I read. Yeah, you should watch my videos so you know what I read. Here's some. Actually, haven't counted them yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we got eleven we're cooking with. Okay, I got my phone. I got my Goodreads. I know what I rated them. Let's start. Let's party, party. That middle part is atrocious. Let's just set that back down, okay. Okay. A Court of Silver Flames. This book did take me the first nine days to read. That's okay. This was one of the best books that I had read this year thus far. So I was like, that's okay. This is a very good book. Like I said, it is what it is. I was extremely inspired by this book. I read the whole series through. A majority of the series I read in June. And so then I just finished it off with this one. I am so inspired by the Akatar series. I still feel like in a way I'm digesting it. You know, um, I was so immersed in that world for so long. It was my personality all of June and probably most of the beginning of July. And still, is it? Yeah, 
It is. Do I think about it 24 seven? Yeah. Do I still Google it every, yeah. Yep, it is. It's gonna take some time though for me to, in my time, I mean like a month or two for me to digest and then I'm gonna start on the Throne of Glass series. So I'm really excited about that. I'll probably start, yeah, anyways. Yeah, I'm a little intimidated by it, but it's okay. This book, Court of Silver Flames, five stars for me. If you've read this series or you haven't read the series, then this doesn't really do, this is not a spoiler or anything. I just, I think that every single book before this one was set up for this one, in my opinion, I know some people are like, that. it's so different than the rest of the series. Like, it's ruining it. I agree to disagree. I do disagree. I am still having feelings about it. I feel the most connected to Nesta and I feel the most attracted to Cassian's. There was a lot of healing in this book. There was a lot of anger. There was a lot of grief in this book. There was a lot of happiness, joy, um, surprise in this book. And I felt all the emotions reading this. Give it every single star that I possibly can. 10 out of 10. Thank you, Sarah J. Mass, for existing. I'm very happy to exist at a time that Sarah J. Mass exists at. So, there you go. Okay, our next one I'm a little bit disappointed with. Five Star Weekend, Ellen Hildebrand's book that came out this year. I'm a Hel Ellen Hildebrand stan. Oh, I love to listen to the books on audio. If you're someone that comes for me and says, hey, listen, listening to books is not reading one. Okay, go look at the science behind it. Yes, it is. Yeah, it 100% is, okay? Maybe it's a different experience. And I will always let you know if I listen to it on audio or read it or read it on Kindle or whatever, okay? So, yeah. Back to your regularly programmed screening. The Five Star Weekend, uh, this one, uh, this one I really wanted to love. I wanted to love it so bad. The writing's good. And here's the thing, this will probably be one of my favorite books in my late 30s, or in my 40s and 50s. Um, that's the age of the characters. It was hard for me to relate because they were all super sad in their lives. My boyfriend's mom also read this one in July and she said this was one of her favorite books of the year thus far. She absolutely loved it. She related to everything. So I think that the age gap for me is what made it lower. So I almost feel like that's an unfair rating because she has really good writing. I just, I didn't enjoy it. I won't recommend it to anyone that's my age right now. So there's other Ellen Hildebrand books that I would say a thousand percent you should read the way she writes characters is amazing and there's so many different ages amongst all of her books and she writes some that are in their 20s like me and i relate heavily to those and those end up being some of my favorite books but this one just i could not say was one of my favorites i'm so excited to have this in on my shelf in my own personal library but this one i ended up giving 2.75 stars for me because it just drugged the fuck on it took me so long to finish so yeah another disappointment that i read Happy Place. I was waiting for months to read Happy Place actually because I had already had the books that I planned on reading when this came out. I got it the day that it came out. The hype was so large that disappointment was so large. You know what I'm saying? If the hype wasn't as crazy as it was, maybe I would have rated it higher. Maybe I would have thought about it differently while I was reading it but I just came into this expecting to love this expecting my life to be changed expecting this to be the answer to every single problem that I've ever had I expected this to be just so much more than it was I just I think Emily Henry is just not an author that I feel relate heavily to I do have a friend group that's like this that like met in college I had a roommate that dated my now boyfriend of almost six years roommate for years so like I feel like I could put myself here I feel like I got it I just felt like let down like that's it that's all that it's serving they're out here prove that this book deserves the hype I just I disagree with you but again so much love here we welcome disagreements and in a respectful manner because that's how we create connections as humans right we don't know everything and if you think you know everything Go to therapy, my love. Okay, Pirate of the Daughter King. What the fuck did I just say? Daughter of the Pirate King. I had so much fun reading this. 
I think it was just so in flow because it was cancer season, water season, um, just a lot of stuff happening with the flow of water and energy and cancer season. It's like a very powerful season for me. I really enjoyed, I've never read anything pirate related or quite like this before. So yeah, it was, it was very YA. I feel like I could find this on Disney Plus, like movie version, but that's okay. I fucking love Disney. I love Disney Plus. I love those types of movies. So for me, like that's totally fine. Sometimes I really, really need that in my life. This came in a time where I really needed that in my life and it's not for others, so that's why I say that. This is also on Kindle Unlimited, Pop Off. That's really amazing. I'm going to read Daughter of the Siren Queen. I had fun reading this book. I had a lot of fun putting myself in this kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean type fantasy land, you know? I expanded my imagination in that way. I go further into detail on majority of these books on other videos. So this one and then Happy Place and then the next book that I show you, those are all a Summer Reads book and I go deep into detail about these and like what I thought of them. So if you're looking for that, they're on my channel. They're always on my channel. Okay, I'm about to eat my words with this one because this is Beach Read and I did give this one a five stars. I know it's Emily Henry, so I'm like, yeah, I just like don't really relate with their writing. And then I'm over here like, this is a five star. This one is so different than all the others. This one is giving what Happy Place wants or wishes that it gave. I, the writing in this one is so much better for me, I guess. I love a book where it's a writer writing about writers. I fucking love that. I don't know why I love that so much, but I really, really enjoy that trope, that little something in there. It just, for me, it's like multi-dimensional and I'm like, I see what you're doing, even though it's probably not like that serious, but I just, I really, ah! I love that. I love writers that are written. I enjoyed the emotions that I went through while reading this book, right? There's like some grief in here. There's some surprise in here. There's some upset. There's some curiosity in here. I felt like they were so real. The characters in this were so real in a non-cheesy way. I just, the whole entire book, I just kept thinking, you're so real for this. Like I'm talking to Emily Henry, like you're so real for this. A girly's daydream in a realistic sense, even though I don't like the word realistic because I don't, I don't agree with it. But if I had to say, that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. It's like, this is like what it feels like to think up a romance as a girly. That's not fantasy. So I really liked reading it because of that. I, the, the writing was amazing, impeccable. There's some great quotes in this book. Five stars for Beach Read for me. Okay, next we have The Best Kind of Magic by Crystal Sestery. I listened to this one on Audible. It is on Audible uh, it's on Audible Premium. So this one, this whole series is free. I'm, I liked this one enough that I'm listening to the second one now, if that tells you anything. I also love witch fiction so much that it would take a lot for someone to go wrong with witch fiction just because I think uh, options are endless, opportunity is endless in this magical land. The best kind of magic also had a really good um, narrator on Audible, so that helps a lot. It was adorable. It wasn't a hard read. I just, you know, her name is Amber and she comes from a line of witches, but she isn't born with a ton of powers. She's only born with the ability to look into someone's eyes and see their soulmate, their the true love. She's called a matchmaker. And so it's her life. She's still in high school, so it's her life being a matchmaker and it's cute i think i would have probably rated it higher if i had read it when i use my imagination the book usually is better than when i listen to it but it was still a really good listen i would definitely recommend it on audible especially if you're looking for some type of witch fic for this fall this is cute i'm planning on finishing the rest of the series I'm glad that I was able to get my hands on a physical copy. I think this book is really cute and it's fun and it looks like a little carnival. It's just, it's a cute, fun book. I also think that I rated it a 3.3 or that I'm kind of like, mm, is because this wouldn't be a book that I necessarily, if you're like, oh, you love witch fiction? Well, I want to read some witch fiction. What do you recommend? This isn't the book that I would necessarily immediately grab for, 
but it was still really cute, you know? Like, I'm not upset that I read it. I'm happy that I read it. I went out and bought the book, so if that tells you anything, it was good enough for it to be on my shelf, so that's how I felt about this one. All right, next we're doing A Letter to Three Witches. We're still on that witch fic train. I fucking love witch books. Okay, this one I got because it was a really cute cover, and I had never heard of it. I saw it in Barnes and Noble, and like I said, if I see a book that looks somewhat cute and interesting, I'm gonna grab it. So I had no idea what to expect with this one, and I love reading especially witch books when I have no idea what I'm going into. A family of witches, specifically in this book, we're focusing on the little group of cousins. They all receive a letter in the first chapter from one of their cousins, okay? And their cousin that they received this letter from, schemey, she's like, and they've always kind of been like had their eye on her. Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you, they're not allowed to practice magic because someone in their family, generations, generations ago, accidentally said a curse that created the Dust Bowl, so their family was banned to magic. We're talking about this cousin that's kind of iffy, schemey. They're all thinking if anyone's gonna be doing magic and breaking the rules, it's gonna be her right? Trying to decode this message. He's nowhere to be found. A lot of stuff comes in their way, you know? It's like them working together. It's like very family focused oriented. This has happened to me multiple times. I read this book and when I was in the middle of writing it on Goodreads, I was looking like, oh, is it a series? Looked it up. The day that I finished it, the second one came out. What? So I'm gonna read that this year. When I come across it in Barnes and Noble, it wasn't like serious enough for me to like go out and get it that day. But a letter to three witches, I gave it a 3.7. It's cute. I'm gonna be talking about this one a lot. As the months grow more and more towards fall and witch book season, even though that's all season long for me. Okay, a letter to three witches, 3.7. It was cute. Would I recommend? Yeah, sure, why not? Next, we have a duology that are both very close to five star reads. The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret. Oh my gosh, with this book. So these are the first books that I read on my Kindle. The obsession begins. I got through both of them in less than 24 hours. This one, impeccable. The only complaint that I have about the entire book is that the end felt a little bit rushed. Now that I've read this one, I feel like this one kind of ties more loose ends, even if that wasn't necessarily the intention with this book because they're they're kind of different. They're about the same character, but they're like different stories. You know what I mean? Like you don't necessarily have to read this one in order to read this one, but I highly recommend this one first because then you get used to the character and you get used to their writing style. Um, oh my gosh, that twist. Iconic. I don't read the thrillers and I was drooling for both of these. Her books are on Kindle Unlimited and I plan on reading even more, but I don't want to freak myself out, which happens if I get hyper fixated on thrillers, scary books. These two, I would absolutely recommend to you. I don't even know who you are. I don't know what kind of genre is you read. I don't, I don't know what you're into, but I still would recommend these to you. And that's saying a lot, you know what I mean? Already, I have this written down for three people in my life that I wanna buy this book for. What? That's never happened before. This one didn't hit as hard because the initial hit of this one, I kind of was like, oh, I kind of see something coming here, you know? But this one was still so good, so good, excellent. I still gave this one four stars. This one just got higher. This one got like 4.7 or something. The only reason it didn't get five is because I felt like the ending was rushed. But there's not much more to tell you other than read these. Okay, I had to read Divine Rivals next because this is on Kindle Unlimited. Are you kidding me? That was the biggest surprise. I That's so awesome to me, especially with the hype around this one. Oh my gosh. I have not read Fourth Wing yet. As you can tell, I just got that one. I have not read Fourth Wing yet, but oh, the people, the amount of people that I've read that say this is what you're supposed to read after the Fourth Wing hangover. What? I don't necessarily believe in book hangovers all the time because like Akatar, I feel like would be a bigger book hangover than Fourth Wing. And I went with Happy Place after that one and Happy Place wasn't the best, but I didn't feel like I was in a slump or anything. You just get motivated to read a different book. I don't know, maybe you're thinking too hard about it. Here's another book where it's a writer, a fabulous writer, by the way, Rebecca. And Rebecca's gonna write about two 
characters that are writers. Another writer writing about writers. This one's magical realism, which I enjoy, especially if you like historical fiction. If you're going to jump into any fantasy or a touch of magic type of book, this is the one to go for. This is also another one of those books that I feel like heavily could be recommended to a large collection of people and majority would like it. That is a hard thing to do. Some of these fantasy books that I've read just absolutely blow me away. They're 10 out of 10 stars. I couldn't recommend them enough, but at the end of the day, they're not for everyone. I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but I know that there's some people that would rather read historical fiction than about fairies. Like, are you kidding me? Like, ugh, come on. Uh, what's the opposite of grow up? It's like, get younger. You know what I mean? Like, have a little bit of an imagination, you know? If you're not a heavy fantasy reader, then I can see why you would just be screaming, crying, throwing up over this book because of how good it is. I can totally see that. And so that makes me really excited for you to come to the fun wild side that fantasy is. I'll definitely read the second book when it comes out. I think soon. I think it comes out in November or maybe December. But I'll, I'll be reading it like as soon as it comes out. It was that good of a book. Let's see what my, my review on Goodreads says. Narnia, Greek mythology, and historical fiction. I'll definitely read the next one. Also really cool if I'm not Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, definitely. It fell a lot of times. I'm like, is the, am I reading about Narnia? And then I was like, am I reading about Greek mythology? But also it feels very real. Magical realism. Imagine that. I didn't necessarily do my best to describe the plot of this book. But I described it in the way that I feel like that's all you need to know. And, and the way the way I talked about it, you'll know if you want to read it or not. And if you're looking for more details, then just like look the book up and read the like insert or go look at more videos of people talking about this. But the way that I described it is kind of more based on like feeling how you'll feel, you know, or comparing it to heavy fantasy. So I'm not sure. I recommend. Our, oh my gosh. Okay. All right, partner. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to do a cool trick here. Just stay with me. All right, partner. You ready to find out why I got the hat on today? It's because the last, the 11th book of the month that I read, done and dusted. Ah, I fucking love this book so much. I really did. I love this book. It's sexy sexy it reminds me of this shirt reading is sexy that's exactly what that book is oh my gosh and let's talk about the cover the cover in itself is gorgeous it's adorable and it makes me want to display it like face out and that's always a good sign if you connect to a cover chances are you'll connect to a book don't listen to what i say because i don't know what i'm talking about ever okay I gave the book a 4.25 and I'll tell you what, I have not stopped thinking about it since. The second that I started it, I devoured it and I had to keep reading it and I couldn't do anything else until I finished it. So you're like, that is grounds for a five. And you know what? Yeah, but it also made me feel some feelings that weren't like great feelings. But they weren't bad feelings, but they were feelings that made me be like, mm, I, mm, you know, but at the same time, I feel like that's necessary. If it was just perfect, then it wouldn't be perfect. I do a more in-depth review on my Kindle video where I read, it's probably right before this video or it's probably actually after this video. I'll probably post that after I post this video, but it's where I read only on the Kindle for a week. Also, it's on Kindle Unlimited. That's iconic. That's so good. That's so amazing. That's what I was like, yes. So that's also makes it. So that also makes it higher. The fact that it's on Kindle Unlimited, that makes it higher in my head. Holy shit. This would book. I just cannot stop thinking about it. So I wore a, country, a cowboy hat, a cowgirl hat. I love it. It was, if you like Yellowstone, it was very, it was very like Beth and... The fact that I forgot my fictional boyfriend's name here makes me sick to my stomach. Bet you better remember. Rip. It was very Beth and Rip, if you like Yellowstone. It's kind of just like life on the ranch. The smut. <laughs> the smut. It was good. It was, here's the thing, okay? So it was some of the best smut that I've ever read. And then it just went way too extreme. That's where I was like, okay, 
did it. Like, I'm like, yes, give it to me, give it to me. And then I was like, all right, let's transition into something else. There was so much lust for the girl character at the very beginning from the guy. And when books come on really strong like that, at the very beginning, I think it was like chapter two that this all started. When books come on very strong like that, it's really hard for me personally to move past the lust aspect of it and like really believe the characters when they're talking about love or even liking each other. I think lust and like are two different things. Liking each other as people and not just like for their body. It's hard for me to get past that. I don't like to bring this up because I, I read a lot of women authors. So I was like, it felt at the beginning like it was like a man writing this stuff. And I was just like, mm. but obviously my mind was changed. It's just like when I'm going back to that, I'm like, obviously my mind was changed and you just get it, you keep going. You, a lot of people, majority of the people will probably like that. I'm just like kind of sensitive to it because I'm just like looking for something deeper than really good smut scenes. And if I can find something that's really deeper than really good smut scenes, and then it also has really good sm smut scenes, then that's amazing and I love that, okay? And then there's this older brother trope, the protective brother, that I just find, I, I find that gross. Feels like the brother is just treating her exactly the way that he doesn't want guys to. It feels like she's an object that needs to be put on a shelf and someone needs to put a case, it just rubs me the wrong way heavily. It's a brother's best friend sister trope you know what i'm saying so i get like where there would be some like anger in that situation i would be so irritated if my brother dated my best friend that would be weird as fuck you know but i wouldn't be gross in the way that i'm protective with my brother or any other situation other than like I think initial shock and anger if he was dating my best friend you know what i'm saying so like that the whole protective aspect of it i'm like you're just pushing us back a few years with feminism and you know but also you know you we're girls we want to be protected it's there's a there's a line i feel like that we're treading here this book saved it recovered itself multiple times and just like again devoured 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 it but there were some themes that i just like wanted to bring up but i think that it's even better that it's bringing those themes up you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying like it would easy it would be easy to be like gross the whole brother thing that's like one of my biggest aches but then now i'm like it gave me an opportunity to talk to you about this and that's something that weighs heavily on me for other books and a lot of other books i do dnf it because it like grosses me out but this one was good it was really good i liked how the main character worked through some stuff that she needed to she was like found some fears i found some connections in different areas of her life i felt like it was layered i it, i really enjoyed this book i absolutely recommend it i ordered it for my shelf i'm so excited for the next books to come out i feel like this could be a really good great upcoming author this is a de debut novel i love it guess what she got us talking so i love this book highly recommend it i'm very excited for the rest of the series Okay, my love, that was my July reading wrap up. And what a great one it was. What a great, what a great stack of books that I could talk about for my first wrap up on this YouTube channel. I am just absolutely loving making these videos, being here. I'm hoping that you're loving them. I'm Whether you come from the future or you're watching it now or the past, you know. Time isn't linear, so who the fuck no, I'm very thankful that you're here and that I'm so thankful that you're watching. Please give me a like or comment or subscribe. I would be so grateful for that. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about the books that I just talked about. I hope that you very much enjoyed this video. Have a lovely rest of your day. Love you so much. See you later, girl.